What's up YouTube fam? CT Gromer here with a video created to analyze two basic Grom performance mods and determine if they're worth purchasing in an effort to save you money. For the purposes of this analysis, I'm assuming that you've already purchased an exhaust of some kind. I'm using the Yoshimura, and you're now considering air intake and maybe a Power Commander 5 or some other fuel tuner. We will be doing a total of three speed runs. Each will measure a rolling 10 to 55 mile an hour time and a top speed reading. The first test configuration will be exhaust, air intake, and Power Commander 5. The second configuration will remove the Power Commander 5, and the third will remove the Power Commander 5 and the air intake. So just an exhaust, no other performance mods. If you're like most who just purchased their Grom, You've probably purchased and installed an aftermarket exhaust, and now you might be considering removing the airbox because you read somewhere that they're restrictive. Well, you'd be right. This design is ridiculously restrictive. First, the air is sucked through a small snorkel, then enters another small compartment and changes directions to go through a small paper air filter, then changes directions again and goes into another small tube where it finally enters the ECU. An aftermarket air intake, such as the Chimera, pictured here, simplifies the design and reduces restriction by removing the box and multiple compartments and turns the air has to make as it travels through the box, and changing the filter type, cotton gauze, instead of paper, which has its own drawbacks, but we're talking about performance here. And it's also a breeze to install. The Power Commander is even easier to install. You simply plug it in between the ECU black box and the throttle body injector. In its most basic form, it uses proprietary software to override the stock ECU with pre-made fuel maps to richen your mixture. The stock ECU runs lean and will become dangerously lean after modifying both exhaust and intake. Most agree just adding an exhaust should be okay with the stock ECU. Time for the speed runs. It's important to note that I'm 5'11", 165 pounds, and the Grom has approximately 1,400 miles on it. All runs will be done on a full tank of fuel, on the same road going the same direction each time, and on the same day. For the first speed run, I simply completed the run in the bike's everyday configuration because I run the Chimera and the Power Commander 5 daily. Here it is. We score an 11.96 second 10 to 55 mile an hour run, and we maxed at 69 miles per hour. For the second speed run, we simply remove the Power Commander 5. These fairings are tedious, but not hard to remove and reinstall. This speed run features just the Chimera intake and the Yoshimura exhaust. Here it is. For the second speed run, we score a 12.11 second 10 to 55 mile an hour run and interestingly maxed at 69 miles per hour again. Before the third speed run, we had to remove the starboard side fairing, remove the Chimera air intake, and reinstall the stock airbox, which was a pain. I then reset the ECU using a paperclip. If you don't know how to do that, 
Search it here on YouTube. It's very simple and should be done anytime you change your air fuel configuration. That way your ECU learns new settings much quicker. Before the third speed run, I decided to ride the Grom 20 miles to give the ECU ample time to learn. actually feel the bike getting stronger again towards the tail end of that 20 miles. I then topped off the fuel tank and made the third speed run with the Yoshimura exhaust only. Here it is. For the third speed run, we score a 14.15 10 to 55 mile an hour run and maxed at 63 miles an hour. So what does it all mean? If the third speed run is our baseline, then an additional $145 purchasing the Chimera intake yields us a two second faster 10 to 55 mile an hour run, which is a 15% increase and a six mile an hour more top speed. Another cool byproduct of the Chimera intake is the added throatiness in the revs, especially at full throttle, but I digress. Interestingly enough, the Power Commander 5 at approximately $340 showed zero improvement on the speed run when removed from the bike. The bike seemingly pulls a little harder when it's installed and it makes a little bit more engine noise at full throttle, but again, we are just talking about performance and our evidence yields no increase for the money spent. I'm going to echo the popular belief now that if you run aftermarket exhaust and intake on the Grom, you should get some sort of fuel tuner, but it does not have to be the Power Commander 5. There are cheaper options. That being said, if you're truly going to be modifying your Grom with the big bore kit, four valve head, etc., and you're already spending a lot of money, then the Power Commander starts to pull its weight a little better. It's a complex and highly expandable unit that can even plug and play a wideband auto-tune O2 sensor bung, which custom maps and monitors your air fuel mixture in real time, instead of using the pre-made fuel maps online like most of us do. We are getting off topic now, but I wanted to say all of that because the Power Commander is a great product, but for the average Grom rider, it simply doesn't make financial sense to purchase. Guys, if you like what you saw here today, please help the channel grow by subscribing. Each subscriber means the world to me and encourages me to keep creating content. As usual, thank you so much for watching, and if you have questions, comment below. I always respond. Thanks.